Chapter 21 Bella, Vince, and Faro rushed over to where Bartholomew lay. Bella felt nausea rising in her throat as she saw the blood soaking Bartholomew's side. Inspecting the wound, Faro clicked his tongue. Looks bad. He's lost a lot of blood. Hurrying over to a desk in a corner of the room, Faro opened a drawer and began rummaging through it before returning with a long length of cloth. Here, son, he said. We have to slow the bleeding. We will leave in the bullet until we can get you to a doctor, but I'm going to bind the wound. Bartholomew nodded, clenching his teeth. As gently as possible, Faro began to wind the cloth around the injury. Bella turned to Vince, taking his hand. I'm so sorry, Vince, Bella began, looking up at him. I didn't mean what I said. You see, there was this letter, and I thought it was from you, but they tricked me, and I thought you didn't care about me, and I was hurt, and... Vince took Bella's other hand and kissed her. Her eyes closed as his lips met hers, and for a second her fear, worry, and pain all seemed to vanish. Vince pulled away and smiled down at Bella, his eyes sparkling. Ahem! Faro cleared his throat. Bella and Vince looked over to where he was kneeling by Bartholomew. The world is falling apart around you, and you decide to do that now? He asked incredulously, shaking his head. A small smile parted his injured face. Faro turned back to Bartholomew. Can you stand, son? Pushing himself halfway upright, Bartholomew grimaced. I don't think so, sir. I figured as much, Faro said. Don't worry, we'll get you out of here. Rising, Faro walked to where the empty lens frame stood, glass shards peppering the floor around it. Vince went and stood beside him, hands on his hips. Can we replace the lens? Vince asked his father. There is a ship due to arrive in half an hour, Faro replied. Even if we had a new lens, we still would not have the tower ready in time. Is there anything we can do? Vince asked. Not from up here. Vince and Faro returned to where Bella knelt by Bartholomew. Her mind raced. What did they mean there was nothing they could do? What about her father? After all they'd been through, was his ship still going to crash? Is everything going to be okay? Bella asked anxiously. Will my father's ship be able to make it to port? We'll do everything in our power, young lady, Faro said, though he did not look hopeful. However, there's nothing more we can do from up here. We must descend. You go first. We'll follow with the young man. Pulling an arm around each of their shoulders, Vince and Faro helped Fa Bartholomew to his feet. Bella hurried over to the ladder and started down. When she reached the bottom, she stood nearby, watching Vince and Faro descend slowly, supporting Bartholomew between them as they came. When they exited through the small doorway at the base of the tower, Bella spotted a lantern gliding towards them through the evening gloom. The outline of a carriage materialized as it drew closer. The carriage pulled to a stop in front of them, and four men spilled out. Bella recognized one of them as the tallest of the thugs who had escaped. The other three hurried over to where Faro and Vince supported Bartholomew. "'Evening, Mr. Cully,' one of them said. "'I was informed that this young man needs immediate medical attention.' "'Indeed,' Faro said. "'He lost a lot of blood up top. "'Took a bullet to the side. "'Set him down,' the doctor commanded. "'Bartholomew winced as they set him gently on the ground, "'leaning him up against the side of the tower. "'The doctor gently inspected the wound, "'then nodded, as if satisfied. "'Looks like the bullet missed his vitals,' he said. "'The young man will live, "'though he may never walk without a limp again. "'Let's get him into the carriage quickly "'so I can get him back to town and stabilized. "'We'll send a constable back for you when we reach town.' "'Wait,' Bartholomew groaned, looking to Bella. Coming over, she knelt beside him, placing a blood-stained hand gently on hers. He looked up into her eyes, a tear sliding slowly down his cheek. For years, my heart has been chained by a great sorrow, he strained, his face twisted with pain. But now, now I'm free. Thank you. Bartholomew's eyes slipped close as he fell into unconsciousness. Bella watched as they quickly loaded Bartholomew into the carriage. As the carriage pulled away, Bella followed Vince and his father over to the cliff, gazing out into the mist that continued to thicken over the sea. The ship should be drawing in very soon, Faro said. Turning to Bella, he extended his hand towards her. You must be Bella, he said. Vince has told me much about you. Bella shook his hand. Will my father be all right? Faro turned to gaze over the sea once more. Your father is due back tonight on a ship that is scheduled to arrive any minute now. Father, the night is dark, Vince said, panic inching into his voice. With this heavy of mist, the ship certainly won't see the cliffs. We need to light the coastline, or Mr. Strout was right. That ship is going to crash. Vince's words pierced Bella like knives. She looked anxiously to Faro, who stood, his face twisted in thought. There must be something we can do, Bella pled, tears welling in her eyes. Please... I can't lose my father, not now, not after everything that's happened. Father, is there anything we can do? Vince asked again. I... I don't know, Faro said, his eyes searching the gloom. 
I'm so sorry, Bella. If I had any ideas, I would not hesitate, but I can think of no solutions. Bella burst into tears, falling into Vince's arms. Shaking with sobs, she pressed her face into his chest. Her father would die. It seemed surreal. It couldn't be happening. From down the path, the sound of laughter and song floated towards the cliffside. Bella pulled away from Vince a little as the three of them looked back towards the city. As the voices grew louder, the mist began to glow with golden light, getting brighter and brighter until a group of lanterns emerged over the crest of the hill. As they drew near, Bella recognized Margaret, Sam, and Tommy in front of the group, a pair of lanterns hanging from poles in their hands. Behind them marched nearly a hundred lamplighters, each waving a lantern on the end of their lighting pole as they skipped merrily down towards the lighthouse. We ran into them bull-faced thugs in town, Margaret announced as they reached where Bella, Vince, and Faro stood. They recognized Tommy with us and, knowing your friends, told us about your predicament. A right fine mess you've got yourself into this time, eh, Vince? One of the lamplighters chuckled. No worries, said another. We's always happy to help out good old Vince. Guys, Vince exclaimed, the lighthouse is out. We need to light the shoreline so the incoming vessels can make it to port. Sounds like a plan, the first lamplighter shouted. Hey boys, let's light up this coastline. Turning to Bella, he winked. Don't worry, little lady. So if the sun don't shine above, don't let it get you down. We'll raise a light on every street to the other side of town. Running down the shoreline, the lamplighters took up positions along the cliff face, their lights snaking in a golden ribbon down the shoreline towards the harbor. Bella looked to Faro, who stood with tears in his eyes. I think that will actually work, he breathed. She's gonna make it. La 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 la